Well, we're ready to kick it off, I think. So uh, thanks everybody for joining. I saw a couple of familiar names out there in the, uh, the log of people joining us today. So we're gonna be talking today about the Merlin Ultra Full High Definition Video Magnifier. Uh, it's an enhanced vision product under the umbrella of the Spiro. So little housekeeping here, Q&A will be at the end. Feel free throughout the presentation if you have a question uh, to type it in the chat box. And you can do so by hitting Alt plus H to open the chat window inside of Zoom. Then type your question and hit enter. And we will get to those at the end. We'll also open it up uh, at the end if you wanna raise your hands and ask the question live. Michelle and I will be taking those questions. If you think about something after the uh, webinar, feel free to email us at training at vispiro.com. That's training, T-R-A-I-N-I-N-G, at V-I-S-P-E-R-O.com. Uh, so you all know who I am, Mike Wood, Strategic Accounts Manager for Education. You can reach me at mwood at vispiro.com. And today I am graced with the presence of the lovely, beautiful, intelligent Michelle Williams. And Michelle, what's your role here at Vispiro? Oh my goodness, I'm going to have to pay you for that one. Um, <laughs> I am the North Central uh, Sales Director for Vispero, and uh, prior to that, my history is with Enhanced Vision out in Huntington Beach, California, so I, I have to say this is going to be probably one of my um, favorite webinars I'll be doing because I am doing it with one of my favorite people, Mike Wood. And uh, we get to touch on one of the, what I call the workhorses of the low vision industry, the Merlin uh, desktop system. And that's why Michelle, it was awesome. I was glad you were able to make it today to help because uh, you know, you've got such a great expertise. I mean, just the knowledge from being in the industry and working with these units. So I'm excited. It's always fun working with you. I have, I have fun working with you. It's not work, it, it's just fun. <laughs> and that's, that's a good thing. Next slide, please, Carl. So today, we're going to be discussing uh, the overview of the Merlin Ultra features, and then we're going to go into a live demonstration of the product. Uh, we did mention earlier the CEU credits. For anyone that missed it, the opening code is WONDER. We're going to be doing a raffle. So this is kind of exciting. Uh, the raffle today is for the Pebble handheld video magnifier. And then we're going to end this with Q&A, so you'll have some time to ask questions, uh, answers, or make any comments or suggestions at the end as well. And I love your avatar, Mike. I think next time we're going to have to do a kind of a guess how many times Mike's avatar shows up. Oh. And you can win the raffle because well, I we've think got that is awesome. And thanks. And we've got a surprise avatar releasing uh, the release date of today, later on coming up too. That is kind of fun. So um Again, this is the raffle. So this is some images here of the Pebble HD. So this is a high definition handheld video magnifier. Uh, you can get 1.2X, oh, excuse me, 1.25X all the way up to 13.5X in this unit. The retail value of this is $595. So it's a great um, prize, super useful. These have been handy. I mean, lots of people have these out in the industry and love them. Yes, they do. And I think that's a, it's a great segue into the Merlin Ultra because we always speak in terms of a low vision kit. You know, what do people use when they are out shopping? What do people use when they're at work or at home? And so the desktop really lends itself uh, to the work and home situation. And uh, we were, we were kind of tossing around questions. How do we kick off this thing about the Merlin Ultra. And we always talk about that 80-20 rule and that all it means is what do you do most of the time? I mean, are you reading? Are you writing? Are you looking at, uh, are, are you a, a great cook and you're looking at ingredients on the back of uh, different packaging? Everybody reads certain things every day. And again, I can't help but say this is a, a workhorse. It's great for that. Um, but it's also for people who, if you have quite a large central vision loss, for instance, and you're doing some very profound peripheral viewing, you're able to get up to this desktop system really closely to that screen 
and use your peripheral viewing because you have all that adjustability with the screen that we're gonna show you uh, later on in this presentation. And then when you need a device, for instance, at, at an agency, uh, at a, what do we call it? Uh, kind of a, a library type situation in some of the retirement communities, uh, or you are the trainer and you're gonna have multiple people in front of this device, you are now able to adjust uh, the screen to different statures of persons, whether they're 5'1 or 6'4. Uh, this is something that if you're gonna have more than one person at it, the adjustability is bar none, uh, top notch for this device. And Mike, with that, uh, you're gonna tell us about even more features that make yes. this Merlin Ultra special. Yeah. And, you know, and that's a great point, Michelle, with the flexibility of this, because, you know, I've brought these into homes and set them up for, uh, you know, clients before. And the thing that's neat with it is the fact that, you know, everybody's house is different. You know, I have some people that have this in their kitchen, on their kitchen table. Some people have it on their counter in their kitchen. Some people have it on a card table. Other people put it in a little desk in their living room. So it's very flexible as far as, you know, those different heights of the tables uh, with that monitor being able to move in such great directions, which we will show. So that screen does pivot to adjust to meet the height uh, needs or the desk situation. Uh, the XY table is super smooth and continuous for reading. So the, you know, the basically the movement of it is very smooth. And I also noticed something that was kind of cool. So I've set this unit up at uh, conferences and stuff before and demoed it there. But you know, we've got so many different product lines. I don't really take the time to really dive into each one super in depth. And I like doing these because I. I have to take the time to do it, right? And one of the things I noticed on the XY table with this unit is it's rubberized around the edges. So there's this kind of like um, bumped out rubber edge. And it's really nice because it allows you to move it not only from using that middle where you can lock it, but also from any edge, it kind of just grips with your skin and easily lets you move it. So, uh, and the other key thing, and you had said this to me and I, I was like, ah, oh, is it gonna be this easy, right? So literally it's just plug it in and begin. I mean, you take it out of the box and you plug the adapter into the back. There's two power sections, you plug it in, plug it into your wall and you're good to go. There's one power button, it's super easy to use. I mean, there's no confusion, nothing. Literally take it out of the box, plug it in and it's ready to work. So it's nice. And I must say there, Michelle, I love the uh, magnifying glass you got there. <laughs> yeah, that's how we go into most accounts, just like that. Um, but you bring up the low tech part of the rubberization of the XY table. And thank you for doing that because a lot yeah. of times we forget why these devices are designed the way they are. They're so easy to use. We forget that um, Merlin was designed, there are tons of desktop systems out there. And our brands, our three that we have are wonderful. Each one has controls that can help persons uh, to be able to use these types of devices effectively. The Merlin specifically was designed to be very easy uh, for someone who has multiple challenges, maybe with their hands, uh, they might have a tremor and so forth, and we'll get into that. But I like the fact that you're highlighting uh, being able to grasp an XY table and pull it towards you. It's not easy for everybody. And that's a good point. No, that was what I was really impressed with. Next slide, please, Carl. So the sharp image for reading accuracy with a wide uh, field of view. So that was the other thing, the monitor on this. Uh, so I have the 24 inch unit that I'm gonna be demoing today. Uh, and it does come in three different sizes. So you have a 20 inch, a 22 inch and a 24 inch. And the other cool thing is the magnification level. So this is also gonna depend on you know, what your needs are, right, when you're picking this. And that's why I think you and I both know when you're working with people to sell these, you have to ask a lot of questions and listen. Uh, you know, what are you gonna be doing with it, that 80-20 rule, uh, things like that. So on the 20 inch screen, your magnification is 1.97 up to 61X magnification. On a 22 inch monitor, you have 2.2 to 67X magnification. And on a 24 inch monitor, which we have here today, 
you have 2.4x all the way up to 73x magnification. So you can get really large, you know, you can get in really close with things. And that true color representation when viewing pictures uh, of people and places and whatnot. And I'll show that in the live demo. I've got some photos here. I've got magazines, um, different food packages. So you'll be able to see that color representation. It's just really, really nice and clear, vivid, uh, especially with that high definition camera. Yep, absolutely. And let's go to that next slide, Carl. Um, I'm going to talk about the easy to use ergonomic controls. Um, it's one of my favorite things about the Merlin is how much thought went into all these controls because with, uh, with vision issues, we tend to learn things by feel at first. And every single control on here has a different feel to it. And what I mean by that is when you are feeling to the left underneath what we call the bezel of the of the screen. So underneath that little square uh, flat part of the plastic that surrounds your screen is what we call a rocker switch. It's an LED light switch where you can turn on and off the lights depending upon where you have the Merlin. If you get a lot of light in say your dining room midday, sometimes you might wanna turn those lights off, but at night you're gonna need them on. So it's right there where you need it. The second control, is your color mode button. And this is convex or bubble shaped. So it, it pokes out in kind of a, a curved round dome shape. So when you feel it, you know, that's gonna affect your contrast. You can toggle through all the different contrast modes that you can use. The third control, which is just front and center is your magnification dial. And this has a texture to it that is lines. There's little, line indentations to it. And we're gonna show you a, a couple of photos along with Mike's demonstration of this, of how these are non-grasp controls. And what we mean by that is if you're working with a client who cannot grasp things and tightly with their fingers, there's another way that you can affect these controls. So that's right in the middle. And then your power button is convex, meaning it indents. It is uh, lower than the actual plastic of the front of the bezel of the Merlin. So you press it in to turn the unit on and off. And then to the right, underneath the bezel of the Merlin is the brightness slider control. And it's a really easy action control. I love it. You can take the, the, the back of your knuckles and you can just go to the right or to the left and affect the brightness of how you're viewing those materials and how bright that light is. So really important for those who have glare issues, uh, even if you're in a contrast mode. And let's see, let's go to the next slide, Carl. Uh, here's a couple of pictures because Mike is also our in-house hand model. I had him take pictures of his hands because we have a lot of clients who they can't grasp things. Uh, they cannot pull on things and push with their fingers because it's too painful. They may have neuropathy, which is uh, not being able to feel, which comes with its own kind of nerve pain. They could have arthritic conditions, which means they can't uh, curve their hand or straighten out their hand due to arthritis, which is also painful. And so the Merlin controls, that's what I mean by a non-grasp situation. So you, if you look at the photo that's in the upper portion of this, we've got Mike using his knuckles to push up the XY table control, the break, if you will. And he's affecting it with the back of his hand instead of grasping it. And then below that is a photo of Mike using the bottom of his hand to kind of run it along back and forth, so left to right, on the magnification wheel to catch those lines or that texture to move the magnification controls without having to painfully grasp them, which I think is so important. Um, where a lot of times we're dealing with people that have more than one thing going on besides vision loss, and we have to, we have to treat the entire patient uh, not just the vision loss. So I'm really proud of how this has been designed. 
And uh, let's go to the next slide, Mike. So what you expect and more. So we already went over with the 24 inch monitor, we've got 2.4X to 73.2X, uh, depending on the screen size, that's gonna vary. Uh, your adjustable viewing mode. So Michelle had mentioned the color mode button. So that's gonna toggle you through your, through your different preset uh, color choices for your contrast. And then you can also adjust the brightness, um, which she talked about. And then the other cool thing I thought, and you made this, uh, you talked to me about this yesterday when we were kind of going over the webinar, is the contrasting XY table for targeting the material that you're gonna be reading or viewing underneath the unit. And so the XY table is, and you'll see it when I show the live video here, is um, kind of a light gray border, but in the middle, it's a dark gray, almost black. And that really lets you know if, if you're putting material on that you know, dark gray, black area, that is then gonna be able to be viewed by the Merlin's monitor. So it's really nice and allows you to you know, know where you're putting the material. Uh, so even if you do have low vision, that's really easy to see and view on there. Absolutely, Mike. And you did something really cool the other day when you were working with the Merlin Ultra to customize one of the controls. Um, what did you do? Oh yeah, so this was a neat feature and I wasn't aware of this. So. You know, one of the key things I found with this is the ease of use right out of the box. Like we said, you plug it in, you're ready to go. But the other cool thing I thought was you only have a few buttons on the front of this, right? So you've got the light switch, the mode, the size, the power, and then the brightness. That's it. I mean, you can't get, you know, more simple than that, right? But that light switch, if you go into the menu functionality, you can actually customize that light switch button um, or, you know, toggle switch, I guess you would say on or off. So it was kind of neat because you've got a couple options. So in the menu, you can customize that to be either the light, so you can turn the light on or off, or you can do an intelligent focus lock. So you can make that be your autofocus switch. So if you wanna turn your autofocus on or off, you can do so with that button, um, which is nice if you're writing underneath the unit a lot, or you're looking at different things that you don't want it to autofocus on, um, you can make it where it's gonna focus on just the paper that you're writing on, say, instead of trying to focus on the back of your hand or on the pen. Uh, you can also do a freeze frame. So if you wanted to set that up to be where it's going to freeze frame whatever image is on the monitor. And I think you had said you had some use case scenarios where people were using that freeze frame, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, again, if somebody has a, a hand trimmer, or if they are specifically looking at uh, a lot of food labels and a lot of the you know, cans are round, uh, prescription bottles are round, you can take a temporary snapshot of that and then not have to hang on to it anymore. So you're not uh, holding it in place, if you will, because it is round. So anybody who has a, a tremor or a limitation with holding on to uh, any type of items, or they just want something to just have that frozen so that in case they knock the piece of paper or the um, newspaper, it is right there locked on the screen temporarily. And then the last option that you have uh, to give that light switch is the locate option or the locate feature. And what that does is that's going to, so say you're, you're at you know 15x magnification and you've got a newspaper under there, or you've got a book, whatever it may be, and you can click that. What it's gonna do is it's gonna zoom out and it's gonna bring you to the minimum magnification. And then it gives a little box in the middle of the monitor so you can find where you wanna be on that material. So say it's a bill. We always know, we hate to get them, but we always know that usually the amount due is down the bottom right, right? Um, for most bills. So put the bill under there and do your locate option. It's gonna zoom you out and give you the minimum magnification, move that little box down to the bottom right. And when you switch that switch back on, it actually brings you back to your previous magnification setting. So if your magnification is always set at 15X, it's gonna bounce you right back to 15X. So that is the last, but definitely not the least, uh, you know, functioning button there for the uh, light switch. So next slide, please Carl. The light wings. Uh, so this has LED lights built into it um, and we kind of named them the light wings. You can see they kind of look like a set of wings on an airplane. 
Uh, but I was saying earlier, you know, don't throw this thing off your, you know, desk or out a window and see if it flies because it ain't going to happen. Um, but they're really nice because the way that they're set up and designed is to give you the minimizing, uh, you know, minimize the amount of glare or shininess on, you know, papers and photos and things like that. So it gives you an even light saturation. And inside the menu, you can actually customize the brightness of these LED lights as well. So if you find that they're too bright, you can dim them, or if they're too low, you can increase the intensity. But one cool thing I thought, Michelle, was you pointed out, um, was it an engineer that gave you this info? Actually, it was one of the first veterans I worked with. Um, I was new to the industry and I was working with the Merlin and we always tell people, um, bring whatever books, magazines that you want to use so that they're invested in really using this and looking at the machine. And sure enough, the shiniest magazine I've ever seen was taken out of the bag and um, they put it underneath and he goes, watch this. And he puts one of his pens, he had like a, one of those thicker pens because he could grasp it easier. And he puts it right at the head of the magazine, so closest to the back of the machine. And it tipped the magazine just slightly and it moved that hot spot right out of the way. And it was the neatest low tech kind of um, advice I had ever seen. And I give it to everybody who's just starting out on their low vision journey with these types of devices. Sounds simple, but boy, it makes a difference. Yeah, because I know that when you've got high, you know, glossy paper under there, sometimes you can get some glare from the lights. Um, so, and that was, I had never known to do that. So that was great advice, uh, great input there. And the other neat thing is these lights, you know, I think we get asked sometimes, well, do I have to change the light bulbs or, you know, when's the light bulbs gonna fry out on me, right? And this was super cool too. So these are LED lights and they are going to last you a very, very long time. So the LED lights at the minimum are going to last for 100,000 hours. Now, 100,000 hours would be 10 years of leaving this unit on 24-7, 365 days a year. Uh, so 10 years of leaving this on continuous use. That ain't going to happen. Um, but we're, the we're, light not telling, we're not telling you to do that, but I asked the engineer, I go, give me something I can equate it to that I can understand. And he said that, and I was like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> a long time, a very long time, yes. Yeah. So it's great. So the, light, the lighting's really powerful. So next slide, please, Carl. The optional ultra pack. So this unit, as we mentioned, Michelle and I was saying, it's super simple, easy to use, right? But if you wanted to add some extra functionality to it, there is an optional ultra pack. So the ultra pack is $150 uh, if you want to add this on. What this allows you to do is add guidelines for marking or for tracking purposes and also windowing. So I kind of call it the guidelines and the masking that's going to kind of cut out from the left or the right or the top and the bottom to minimize what you're seeing and help you focus in on specific text. Um, and the other thing that this adds in is a PC toggle. So in the back of the unit, there's an HDMI port. So I can plug my laptop into the Merlin Ultra and I could toggle and use the Merlin Ultra's monitor as my laptop or computer monitor and then hit that PC toggle button um, on that Ultra Pack and toggle it and switch it right back to my CCTV. Now, earlier we were talking about you know, physical limitations, right? So what if they have a difficult time pressing buttons or things like that? You can also add on an optional foot switch. So it's a foot switch. Uh, think of it as like the old school sewing machine, you know, foot pedal almost. And if you were going to use that, that's the $50 option to add on. And that's gonna do the exact same thing as the PC toggle button on the Ultra Pack. It's just gonna to toggle you between your PC and the CCTV. So two op yep. optional things. And Mike, people, people may be asking, well, why, why did you do it this way? Why did you design it this way? We have to go back to the fact that when we looked at the market, there are wonderful CCTVs that are out there um, in, our, in the rest of our brands. And Merlin was specifically designed to be very, very simple um, to trying to not be con 
confusing with controls. You may have students that need those line markers because you're in education, Mike, and you yep. deal with a lot of students. So it's wonderful to add that in. But I know um, my mom using her unit, toggling through all those things would not be good for her in that instance because she, you know, she needs minimal controls. She likes things to be very simple. It's just her preference. So that does that for her. So again, it's whatever fits the needs of that low vision patient. Yeah, the flexibility is nice of that, you know, and I personally, I love guidelines and masking because like you said, I work in the education market. So for kids, it's really, really um, helpful. And someone just, I will answer that question there. The ultra package, uh, if you want to add the optional ultra pack, it's $150 and the foot switch is $50. Um, and to go over the pricing again, I'll give that just before we go into the live demo here, the 20 inch model is 2,995. The 22 inch model is 3,145. And the 24 inch model is 3,395. So next slide, please, Carl. Great. Yeah, the, uh, the Merlin Ultra story is a long one. Um, you know, it's been, designed and assembled uh, in Huntington Beach, California. It has a three-year warranty, very easy to use. Um, we pride ourselves in having local support, uh, which includes partners who are in every single state. So we've got people that represent the product that can do those no obligation in-home demos uh, or come to your agency or school. Uh, the Merlin product line, oh my gosh, it's been around for a long time, since about 2001, and there are oodles of them still out there um, working in schools and agencies and people's homes, and I am proud to say that it is a past contract awardee of the Veterans Administration, so there are a lot of veterans out there using it, which we thank you for your service, uh, so it's a, it's a wonderful product. It's been around a long time. We've taken feedback from the field and uh, have continued to uh, put a lot into the Merlin Ultra's story. And you know, Michelle, you made a great point there that I want to repeat is that network of our dealer network, our reseller network, and then our regional directors. Um, you know, we've got regional directors scattered throughout the US, but we've got a, such a great strong dealer network. So if anybody ever wants to see these products, try them out, get your hands on them. Some of our dealers have showrooms you can go to to try them. Others will come out to your house. Um, you know, if you're worried about anything, they'll still come out with PPE or whatever to be safe. Um, but yeah, just let us know. And if you're in some remote, crazy area that no one can get to easily, um, you know, we can ship something out to you to let you try it out and then, you know, have you return it back. We'll return label. And if you don't return it, I'll come and hunt you down. So you have to return it. <laughs> Next slide, please, Carl. Oh, so now I'm up the uh, live demo of the Merlin Ultra. So here we go. And that's a great um, visual there of the Merlin actually too. So you can kind of see the X, Y table and everything, but let's bounce into the live demo. So Carl, I'll ask you to um, stop sharing. And then what I'm going to do is switch my camera and I'm going to set this up to spotlight for everyone. So you should all be seeing my monitor now, or you should be seeing my Merlin, I should say, right? Yep. And we have to preface this with, because of the Zoom technology, there's a different, um, what we call refresh rate. So you may see some slight uh, blurring, but it has nothing to do with the product itself. It has to do with the camera on our laptops and how it responds to a, a, a visual screen like this, so. Thanks, Michelle. So right now, you know, Michelle spoke about earlier that 80-20 rule, right? So you kind of figure out what is the user that you're working with? What do they want to do? So one of the biggest things I find as I get into a house and setting this up when it's not on the education market really is newspapers. You know, you might want to read the sports pages, you might want to read whatever. So here's a newspaper on the screen. Quickly and easily, I can enlarge that. The text looks great on there, right? And then what I can also do 
is change by hitting that mode button. And it tells me up on the top of the screen what color mode I'm in. So now I'm in enhanced positive, enhanced negative. So you've got all these different preset color contrasts that you can do in here. So really easy. Um, that XY table, again, we were saying there, I'm just gonna show you, and I can actually zoom in there for you too. So that XY table, this is rubberized as well. So it's easy to, you know, when you push it in, it's gonna allow you to move that around freely. And when you pull it down towards you, it locks that in. Now it's totally locked in. So you can kind of make it easier or harder to move. So give it some resistance or totally lock that in place. Hey Mike, that's a, that's a great shot. Can you pull the monitor forward to show the light switch and the brightness control? I can, yeah, that's a great, great point. Thanks, Michelle. So underneath here, you'll see the light switch is just an on and off and boom there. And you had mentioned this about the brightness. I thought the brightness thing was really easy because this is just a gliding you know, switch here, but it does click in if I, Stop talking for a second. You'll hear it when I move it to the middle. You may be able to hear the click. So it clicks in in the middle, which is kind of the preset of where you'd be most of the time. But it's really nice, and you'll see why in a little bit to be able to change this quickly and easily when you're looking at different things. So the other thing I'd like to show, and I'm going to zoom out here for a second, is show you the flexibility of this monitor. So you can see, I mean, we're moving this up, down. It moves left, right. So you've got all different functionality, flexibility with that monitor. Michelle, you had a, you were talking earlier about somebody using this, what is it, on a podium, was it? Yeah, I have a low vision doctor in one of my states that when he speaks at an AOA, so his state meeting, uh, he will actually have them take the top shelf of the podium out and then set the Merlin onto that second shelf and then he pulls the screen forward so it's flat, and then he reads his notes from it. So when he's doing his uh, topic, he's able to just take his note cards, put them underneath, and uh, not have the teleprompter, because the teleprompters are usually in this really odd kind of green color with the clear background that they use, and it's not conducive to his particular low vision eye condition. So he uses his Merlin as a teleprompter. So one of the things I do want to show you in here is um, I was saying last weekend was really nice here. So I was getting some seeds ready to plant, you know, lettuce and stuff. So you can see here, this is the packet of seeds and how small that font is on the back, right? Very, very, very small, hard to see. Um, and if I toss this under the Merlin, First off, you notice how quick and responsive that camera is to setting up the focus on that. But now in the full color mode, we're able to look at the map and see what zone, when should we start planting. And then I can zoom in here to my instructions. And I can easily, again, with that mode button, just switch over to different contrasts and colorations and really zoom into that text. You can see how large we can make that. And again, this is extremely small text. I mean, I'm showing you there with the camera, but that is small, small text. So the other thing we can do here is we get back to color. Uh, I just want to show you some different use case points. So you may get photos from family or friends. And earlier we were talking about that brightness. So you'll notice now if I decrease the brightness, I get more of a color saturation, right? It looks a little bit clearer and crisper than when I'm at my increased brightness, kind of washes out the picture. So you can get that, look at that there. We were laughing earlier at this one here. <laughs> <laughs> Who's looking at you? So you can, again, you can see the brightness and it's so easy to do. Just slide that bar, boom, left to right. Um, also, packages of food and things. Michelle, you made a great point with this earlier, right? When uh, 
we were doing a quick run through to see if everything was looking good, right? And what oh, were you gosh, saying about yes. that? You know, when I had my own retinal detachment, um, contrast was an issue for me. And I was looking at boxes like that pasta barilla box with the red um, lettering on blue background. And I was looking at your biscuit box here with that red and yellow. And now you have it on a contrast mode and boom, that logo pops right out. You can read the letters, it crisps up those edges. So just having that contrast, being able to change and get rid of that red because red is one of the first colors in most of the time anyway, not always, but most of the time uh, we lose our, our red when we have macular degeneration, the reds and purples tend to go. So having that ability to change the contrast, that's huge. And the other one I was gonna show was, you know, even this yellow, this can be difficult to see because it's brown writing on a yellow background. And so, Throw that under there, you'll see, again, it zooms right in, clear, crisp image. But if you find that it's difficult to read, quickly switch over to your coloration and zoom in, and there you go. So really easy breezy. Um, I also like to show things like, you know, what if you have your family over or you have some friends, you know, some of my friends are really into card games and stuff. Um, so you've got a box here for Boggle. Um, so you want to play a game and I'm going to switch over to my full color mode here again by clicking that color mode button until it tells me color up on the top corner. So you'll see here, I can look at this box, which is actually, you know, got some depth to it. Flip it on its side. I can read the instructions or whatnot on the back. But this is kind of cool because in this game, the concept is you, you get this group of letters and you want to make words out of it. Well, this might be hard to see for someone low vision, right? If they're looking at this, well, quick and easy, toss that on there. And you've got huge letters now. Um, and you can zoom in even further or closer if you wanted to. But this then would allow you to see these much more easily on that 24 inch high definition screen. And we were joking around earlier how you can move your screen and turn it to the side so that the other players can't see it. <laughs> no cheating, no cheating. <laughs> no cheating, yes. <laughs> so the other thing I want to talk about um, is the menu, to get access into the menu on this unit, right? It's super easy. Again, minimal buttons along the front. But if I wanted to access the menu, all I'm gonna do is press and hold the mode button. And I press and hold that for about five or six seconds or so. And it brings me into my configuration. So by turning my magnification knob in the middle now, I'm able to pick and choose what, you know, what I wanna choose, I guess, in the menu, I should say. This is giving me my options. So screen messages. Earlier, you saw how it brought up the coloration on the top. It told me what color modes I was in. If you want that on, boom, you check, check this off. And all you're going to do by checking that is hit the mode button and you'll see the checkbox go away. Now it's checked off again by pressing mode. Over to the right, my black and white mode. Quick, move this to the right again. So I'm moving this clockwise to choose. Color mode selection on or off, just pressing the mode button. Yep, and Mike, you brought up a really great point of, we have this wonderful network of uh, not only employees across the country, but our business partners that are in every state. This is the kind of customization that they can do with the unit for you, for your clients. So if you have someone who doesn't wanna to toggle through all those color select modes, color contrast modes, you can have them turn off the ones that they're not using. You can have them turn off the messages that pop up on the screen if they so choose to have that turned off because sometimes that is a, a bit of an irritation to people seeing it pop up. But whatever it is, they're able to customize this unit to exactly what your patient or client needs. Which is really nice. And I mean, you 
you've got 28 different color options in here. So it can be confusing. And when you are meeting with a client, like you said, it's great to be able to customize this easily for them. So you've got that, the light intensity. So earlier we talked about the brightness control down here, but what about those LED, you know, light wings that we've got on the unit? If we wanted to increase or decrease them, I can actually, so light intensity is on the screen. I hit my mode button. Now you'll see there's options to increase or decrease that intensity of those LED lights. Tap it again, and it brings me back to that previous menu. Over to the right one more, I get control switch. So this is where we were talking about earlier that light switch. What do we want this light switch to do? So right now it's controlling the lights. Well, if I wanna change that, I'm gonna hit my mode button again, and I'm going to be able to choose between focus. So this is gonna turn the autofocus on or off. The light on or off control, which is currently checked, and that's what it's doing. By default, it's gonna control your lights. Switch that to the right one more time. I'll turn that knob, my freeze frame. If I decided I wanted to do freeze frame, I'm just gonna choose that, check that off. Now I'm gonna turn this knob counterclockwise until it says previous menu, go back to mode, and now I can exit out of this. And now this switch, when I hit it, you'll notice I moved my letters away, but they're frozen in there. Which this actually, I didn't even think of this. This is great when you're playing a game like this because now I can give this to the other people so they can view it. And I can pick my words from looking at that here. So, um, and then quickly and easily toggle that back. And now we're back into our live mode. So very easy to do. And that again is gonna be, you know, you got to talk to the client, the individual, the student, whomever you're working with, that's gonna be using the unit to say, you know, what's, what functions do you wanna use on a regular basis? Is it more important to turn the lights on or off? Or is it more important to have the freeze frame option? So those are things that you'd wanna find out. And with that said, is there anything else, Michelle? Any points um, I was gonna show also, you know, writing underneath this um, low tech, you know, bold lined paper, right? You can buy this at places, um, or you could also just print this out if you've got an, a printer, but this is great for writing underneath these units. Um, and, you know, you can get, I'm writing at an angle here because I'm coming in from the side, but. So easy to write. Um, and that would be where you would turn that focus on or off because when you're writing, it is gonna be trying to focus on my hand when I really want it to be focusing on the paper, the page that I'm writing on. So you would turn the focus off for that there. And yeah, without that, uh, with that said, I mean, any other things, Michelle, that you think I'm missing or we didn't cover? Uh, no, that was a great demonstration, Mike. I love that you showed the adjustability of the monitor itself, all the controls, and uh, those were great visuals. Now it makes me want to plant a garden. <laughs> Get out there, Michelle. It's time. It's time. Um, so, yeah, well, I guess what we could do now is we can open it up to the uh, Q&A. And you know what we'll do, Carl, is we'll, we'll toggle back over to you and give you the controls. And I will remove my spotlight. And oh, is it the raffle time? This is exciting. Um, so we had somebody go through and pull the names and throw them in a basket or they use an automatic gener number generator to pick. So Michelle, do you have the name there as well? Um, do you wanna announce the raffle winner? You know, I do not. I believe we were gonna let Terry do that. All right, so Terry sent me, all right. So the winner of the Pebble is Janelle Shaver. I believe that is how you pronounce your last name. Shaver or Shaver, uh, Janelle. So what we would ask you to do, Janelle, is email training at vespiro.com, email us all of your contact information and where you want that to be shipped to. And then we will get that shipped out to you so you can have that. And it's a handy dandy little unit. Um, 
Real powerful. You're welcome. Uh, congratulations. Yay, congratulations, Janelle. Yes. So next slide, please, Carl. So questions and answers. So as we said earlier, Alt-H to open the chat window. Uh, you can type it in, hit enter, send us your questions. And if anybody wants to raise their hand as well and you want to ask your question live, feel free. So MC raised their hand. So let me uh, go in here to the participants and un give you the access to talk, MC. All right, you can unmute yourself, MC, and ask that question. Okay, I was just going to do a chat, but all right. Um, I just wondered how to do the freeze frame again. Yeah, sure thing. So what you're going to do for the freeze frame is you're going to go into the um, menu by pressing and holding the mode button. So you're going to press and hold that uh, for about five or six seconds. So press and hold that. I'm going to actually do it right now, too, so I give you the exact instructions. And then once you do that, you're going to then use the magnification knob in the middle. You're going to rotate that to the right until you get to the option that says control switch. And you know what, let me, uh, I can go, we have time that I can switch this over to the, that camera. And if you spotlight my video MC, um, you can actually, you'll see. So I pressed and held the mode button for a couple seconds. And then by rotating the magnification knob in the middle, I come over to control switch. I hit mode to select that. And you want to switch, or excuse me, turn this knob over to your left um, or right, depending on where it was last set. But you're going to rotate this to the left or right. And then you would switch and see freeze, lights on or off, or focus. And there's a little box next to that. So you asked about the freeze frame. So you would just choose that. It's already selected, so it has the check box. If I want to go back to using the switch for my lights, I just check that off. And now when I go back to freeze frame, it's gone. Again, click mode to choose that. Then you're going to rotate the knob to your left till you see previous menu. Hit mode. Comes up exit, hit mode again. And now you're back to your live view. And now that light switch will be your freeze frame. And it will tell you up on the top left that it's freeze. And then when you switch it back to the, when you flip the switch back to the left, freeze goes away and you're back into your live image mode. So that would do that for you there. Great question. And we will also be archiving this. So we're gonna archive the webinar. Uh, right now it's live on YouTube um, on our enhanced vision page, but we'll also be uh, putting this up in little snippets. So you'll have a snippet on, I'm not sure yet what we'll do, but Tino is on our team and he does a great job at these. So he'll cut it up into different lessons, little lessons of, you know, a couple of minute video. So there might be one on accessing the menu. We might do one on, you know, reading different materials or whatnot, but those will be on there. It's a great question. Um, and you are welcome. Any other questions? or comments? No, quiet crowd today. Either we put them to sleep or- Or we did our job, I don't we, know. <laughs> I'm gonna go with we did our job, Michelle. I think we did it. <laughs> um, I will say though, I was impressed with this. It's fun doing these because I, I learn more about the equipment every time. I mean, there's so many different things that, yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've seen the Merlin, but I didn't even know about that light switch functionality, so. It was cool to learn these things. Um, and please also, if there's anything you want to see, so Vespero obviously encompasses a lot of different brands, right? We've got Freedom Scientific, Enhanced Vision, Optelec. Uh, if there's a product from one of those lines that you want to see a webinar on, you want us to go more in depth about it, email either Michelle or I or email training at vespero.com. If you email training at vespero.com, uh, their team is spectacular. I can't say enough about that team. Uh, they will then figure out who they need to get on the hook to do it. And we'll do that webinar for you and we'll cover whatever you want to see. So please do not hesitate. Um, I can't remember, Terry, I, I don't commit all these things to memory because my mind is 
full, but Terry, uh, if you're, if you can hear me, um, it's like the Ouija board. Terry, can you hear me? I can uh, hear Terry. you. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, from the spirit world, could you please tell us what is the next webinar we're doing next month? It is the Acrobat. Ah, all right. So the Acrobat uh, will be up next month. And so we do every second Thursday of the month is a hardware webinar. And every third Thursday of the month is a software webinar. And those are spectacular as well. Um, you know, those are super helpful. So if you're using JAW, Zoom, Texture Fusion, check those out. Um, and the other thing I do want to give a shout out to is, I don't know if anybody on this call has checked out Clubhouse yet. Uh, it's kind of a new social media app, um, but it's pretty cool. We've been doing a lot of different things on there. So if you are one of our software users, we're also probably going to do some uh, low vision tech stuff on there, but it's all auditory. So we won't be able to show any visuals, but we can answer questions and we've got different events going on there every, every week. We've got different breakfast events. We've got uh, contests on there too. We've got kind of game show things. So check it out. If you want to learn more about it too, feel free to drop us an email. And Mike, what are you doing on April 22nd? Oh yes. Yeah. So April 22nd, this is going to be a good one. Uh, thanks, Terry. See? So April 22nd, I'm going to be having Joe Chung, who is our in-house expert on optical magnifiers. So we have an entire line of optical magnifiers and lighting. Um, and those are the Schweizer brand, which are super high quality um, optical magnifiers. And Joe Chung and I are going to be doing one on, um, on those. So sorry, I was reading that question at the same time Brian sent in. And so I was sidetracked there, but we're going to be doing on April 22nd at noon. So that's the third Thursday, right? Is that, or is that the fourth Thursday of the month? Fourth, um, one on optical magnifiers. So don't miss that one. Cause that we're going to be giving away some pocket magnifiers for that. And it's going to be super, um, educational just as far as, you know, learning about optical magnifiers, which are the low tech stuff. I think we're also going to be talking about um, filtering lenses as well. So glasses that have kind of the blue blocker lenses in them. And so Brian, you brought up and I, I'm going to read this to the group. You have some patients uh, that use this to clip their fingernails. And when I read this, I thought you were telling me to clip my fingernails and I had already done that. So I was like, <laughs> Brian, <laughs> um, that's a great point. We didn't even mention that stuff. Uh, and changing hearing aid batteries. Those, uh, thanks, Brian. The hearing aid batteries are super small, right? Don't they have that little tab and they're super hard to get in? So using this to be able to magnify and put your hands into there and put the change your hearing aid batteries, super great point to make. Um, you know, that's the thing. It's like, I enjoy when you, you demo these or you get out in someone's house and you, you know, see how they're using it. And those are great points. So thank you, Brian, for bringing those up. Any other questions or comments uh, before I give the closing code for today? And you're welcome. Yeah, we appreciate the questions. And uh, if there's anything else that you'd like to see uh, besides a live demonstration uh, or maybe particular um, items that you're using, you can email something like that over to us as well. We'd love to really customize some of these demonstrations to reflect what you're doing. And again, just to say it out loud, the opening code was wonder, closing code is woman, wonder woman. And email those to credits at Vispero. And please follow us. So we just popped up here, um, Twitter, Enhanced Vision. It's at Enhanced Vision. Facebook is Enhanced Vision. Uh, YouTube is youtube.com slash Enhanced Vision USA. And then we also have our blog, which is enhancedvision.com slash low-vision-blog.html. Uh, but if you can't reach any of these or you can't remember this, just drop us an email, we'll send you the links. But that's where you'll be able to see what we have upcoming. Um, so next month when we do the Acrobat, we'll be raffling off something again, could be another pebble, could be something else. Um, but Follow us on our blog, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter for all that stuff, all the good stuff. So thanks. And then our, the last slide here is our email address. So if you 
Mine is M. Wood at Vespero and Michelle's is M. Williams at Vespero. You know, I forgot today, Michelle, I was gonna pop up and say, I have a special guest today, Michelle Williams. And I was gonna do a joke and I totally was too busy to do it, but I was gonna have the actress, Michelle Williams. And then isn't the um, Destiny Child singer, Michelle Williams, wasn't there a singer? Yep, yep. So you you can't Google me. You get everybody else. So it's it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's kind of wonderful. It's like built-in security. But um, when you email us, we'll accept jokes, questions, really anything. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. And I think oh, I just saw another Q and A pop up here. Was there? Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> 